Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Making of Limitless Dental. The reason you don't recognize my voice is because I am not Dr. Ashley. I am her husband, Brian, but I am filling in for her today, and we're joined by Dr. Nick. Dr. Nick, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, you know, tell Ashley to feel better. I know she's a little under the weather, so thanks again for having me, and I'm looking forward to talking to you. Yeah, so you know, I we were kind of getting caught up, and I know that you're just about six months into uh, the practice. It's been a little while, you know, you guys kind of got started with uh, talking through some things and I think life just got busy on, on both of your ends, but uh, you know, kind of catch us up a little bit on where things are uh, with the practice right now as we're, you know, six months in. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, um, you know, everything's actually been going really well. You know, we started, you know, initially we're still working two and a half days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, we're opening up a fourth day, in about probably two weeks, I think it was. Uh, we're also um, building out our surgical suite, which is our fifth room, and we're building out the cabinetry in the sixth and seventh room. Um, and then we're also, yeah, so like everything's been moving very nicely, you know, with the two and a half days a week, we've been averaging about 125 a month uh, in production a month. Um, so it's been going fairly well. Um, we're, we're kicking up the marketing too, so hopefully – we get a little bit smoother, but you know, the hardest thing is just been the staff at this point, honestly, but everything else is great. Yeah. 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 I, man, uh, congratulations on that. First of all, I mean, that's uh, Thank definitely you. no, uh, no easy feat, nothing that should be kind of, uh, just glossed over to be able to be as uh, productive as you are right off the bat and being able to be building out the office to its uh, full uh, extent. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very exciting, man. Very exciting. Very stressful though. Cause we're still have a lot of the growing pains, you know, <laughs> Did you think that by this point, you know, six months in that you'd be at the point of uh, building out those last operatories already? You, you know, I always thought it was going to be like the end of the first year, like 10, uh, like 10, 11, 12. Um, but, you know, we got very fortunate that like, you know, pretty much from the first month, we were just around 100 the first month in production, which is like, you know, very, very good for a startup in my, in my opinion. Right. And then like, for sure. Yeah. And then, then it kind of just, you know, every month I was like, yeah, the next month's not going to be like this. Right. Like it was just like the heat of the opening. And then like, it just like, you know, it, it just keeps continuing. Right. And then like, we're starting to get like word of mouth to spreading around the city. So like, we're getting a lot of more you know, sort of referrals via other patients now. And now we have recalls starting to come back. Yeah. So like, it seems like the perfect kind of storm. Everything's going nicely. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I, I do want to get to the staffing things, but I mean, just thinking about that growth trajectory and now, like you said, now fa starting to face your first recalls or at least your first six month recalls, right? I'm sure you probably have yep. some patients that are coming in a little bit earlier, but, you know, facing that first round, I mean, now you have the two different cycles of, of patients coming through you know, just yeah. to keep up with that little hamster wheel, I, I'm sure is uh, a stressful event. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Like the hardest thing now for me is like, you know, I'm thinking, um, you know, with, with the marketing agencies, I know we can get in that uh, in a little bit when, that I'm getting into, I'm starting to get so busy, like, because now I have hi a hygienist three days a week, and then I'm there three days a week. And like, it's getting to the point where I'm even, and I kind of wanted to stop doing cleanings in February, uh, for like February 1st, but like, we're so darn busy now. I'm still doing three or four a day. And like, now we're having to push emergency patients out a few weeks. So like, it's like, ah, that's why we're opening up the fourth day. And like, it's just, that's the tough thing now is trying to make me not busy enough doing those things that I kind of don't want to be doing and be yeah. doing like the high productive stuff I'd rather be doing. Yeah. It's I mean, a tough I balancing act. I think the fact that you're still doing cleanings at this point is pretty, uh, it's yeah. pretty impressive. I mean, I, I think with, with how busy it sounds and, and even with just hitting those numbers and to think that some of your time is being spent, uh, doing, uh, doing cleaning, yeah. you're hitting those numbers. That's, that's pretty impressive. Well, th thank you, man. Thank you. And like, we've, um, like I said, we've been very fortunate and, you know, the fortunate thing is that we're mostly out of network. We're only ne in network with five or six insurances, but you know, the, bad insurances we do take man like the delta dental reimbursement fees not like worth an hour of my time doing that or anyone's even my hygienist it barely pays their their paycheck with what we're yeah. seeing there so it's just like eh, getting a little annoying yeah 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 i i've, I've uh, walked through many of those uh unfortunate delta conversations with Ashley. <laughs> um, and so yep. those, i i fully fully understand uh what <laughs> what you mean by that um, is she um is she fully out of network now with both her offices. So she actually brought uh, her associate back in network. Okay. Um, and so she's out of network and her associate is in network with Delta. 
That's the way to do it. And so, yeah. So I, I think, you know, she's been going through some, some changes with it and trying to find the right uh, rhythm for it. Uh, it was fully out of network uh, for both locations for a while. And I think she mm-hmm. just, um, you know, felt like the right move for, for her and for the practice was to let, uh, get the associate back in. So that's, I think even just, you know, the past couple of weeks that they kind of went back in. Um, so yeah. just, just to kind of, you know, have a, a little bit more steady uh, flow for, uh, for the associates. Very cool. Is she, is she taking anything else or is it just Delta? Uh, I think there's a, there's a couple that she's in network with, but uh, kind of probably similar to like you, they're, you know, essentially at her UCRs. And so I think awesome. you know, they're, they're pretty much, um, you know, where her office wants to be. And then, yeah, then just the, the Delta, you know, I mean, just like I'm sure New Jersey is the same way. I mean, California is so, so Delta yep. heavy uh, that, you know, it, it mm-hmm. is one of those things that, you know, you, for, for better or worse, it's one of those things that you kind of have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. At least it gets patients and recalls in the door. Right. So like yeah. it's kind of stinks, but it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, you know, I, she and I have had way too many conversations about <laughs> and, my, and my thoughts. And so uh, that, that's for, that's for another, another day. Uh, that could so, be a whole hour just about yeah, Delta. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So tell me how you've been trying to keep up with the staffing for or, or maintaining a team through this. Right. I mean, I, you know, just for reference, I, I know you don't have no idea who I am, but uh, you know, so I'm a physician. <laughs> uh, we have five locations, uh, roughly oh, awesome. employees. Um, Jeez. You know, and so I'm one of the two partners in the practice. So I get it. Like it's not right. Nowadays is, is tough. Right. And it's yeah. very, it's challenging trying to, to find people It's challenging, trying to keep people. Obviously you're growing like crazy. Um, you know, how have you been able to, or how's your kind of process been with trying to be able to, to get people to keep people, you know, to find more people to keep up, to be able to make sure that you can be as productive as you can be. Well, that, I mean, like I said, it, dude, it's been it's been the hardest aspect for me. Like the turning point for me. So, like, I always had this office manager that I used to work with years and years ago at a very good office. I thought I was gonna end up buying. Long story short, I didn't. Bought out by DSO. She ended up leaving, and then we cr- connected years and years later. So, I brought her on initially with me, like one day a week, right on the three days, and. You know, with everything you're bogged down with, it's hard for me to manage all everything that I'm doing, social medias with the business, et cetera. And by bringing her, I now have her three days a week. And like that was actually like the biggest improvement that I've had to my life because she's able to manage keeping track of, you know, who's coming in, the assistants, the hygienists, you know, doing their new interviews and doing stuff like that. You know, we're, we're focused pretty much on Indeed right now. The fortunate thing is we have uh, two hygienists that are phenomenal that uh, I think one of them is going to come full time with me. So I'm not really going to have to worry about her for a while, for the hygienist for a while. But the the assistants, ooh, I, I've been through, you know, 10, 10, 12 assistants. I've been ones that would no showed on their first day of work. And they just no show their second day. I'll be like, oh, that's fine. Maybe your car didn't work. You'll come on day two. This just happened last week. And this was supposed to be for my second assistant. Second day, she no shows this too. We're like, guess we're not giving her a third shot. And she just like never can we never spoke to her again. And it happens way too often, unfortunately. Yeah. Speaking of things that you can have an entire uh, sh- episode about, I mean, this, this yeah. is sheer volume of people that either don't make it to an interview after they set it up, get hired, don't show up on the, on the first day of work. Um, yep. you know, we've had, we've had people that have, uh, came in, they went through kind of the training, right. They're out a week and a half, two weeks in and all of a sudden just disappear. Um, no, yep. don't say, don't say anything. Don't do anything. Uh, no, it's- no. There's no communication. It's amazing. Dude, I, I even, so, you know, I, when I first hired most of my people, I was getting them all the limitless merch. I was getting them like the Metalita things, all these nice things. And then like after a week, like one just not shows up and I just bought her all this stuff. And I was like, I can't be doing that anymore. So I spend like 250, 250 bucks right off the bat. I'm buying them scrubs, buying them jackets, buying them some merch. And I'm like, I can't keep doing this. Cause like, you never know. They might just not show up tomorrow out of nowhere. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's wild. I, I'll tell yeah. you, I'm, I, I say this to Ash all the time. I think it fits for you too. Like if people can, you know, have that kind of disrespect for somebody like yourself, right? I mean, obviously really nice guy, very well known in, uh, in a lot of circles, not just in the dental world, but obviously even in, in social media stuff, like, you know, Ash, you know, she's kind of the same way, right? Just this incredibly giving kind human being. I'm like, if people can do this kind of stuff to you, 
what kind of help, what kind of uh, hope do the rest <laughs> of us have, right? Like, I'm like, I'm just a guy <laughs> that's trying to run a practice. I'm like, how, how can any of us have hope if, the, if you can't even get people? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I feel all the time, man. It's just like, it's every day. It's like something that I would not have thought have would have happened, right? And like, it's just, you just have to keep, I just keep rolling with it, right? And then you, I'm, now I'm just like, I'm in a continuous cycle where I'm continuously like interviewing people, even if I'm not like actively, actively hiring. It's just like, I am constantly sending messages on Indeed. Oh, yes, yeah, send me a resume. Just like making sure there's always someone. Cause like, you know, if tomorrow my front desk kind of calls out and says she's not coming anymore, I'm kind of in a tough position. Or if that happened to my assistant, cause I thought I was going to have two assistants two weeks ago. And now I'm only down to one. If she calls out tomorrow, I'm of course sort of screwed, you know? So how big is your, your uh, whole team right now? So you said I heard two hygienists. So, uh, yeah. So what we, we have, so we, we're, we're seeing what we have one hygienist who's there on Mondays and my other one's like a Wednesday, Friday. Mal, okay, gotcha. When I bring the Monday one on full time, she's going to take over for the other one. But as of right now, it's, they're both for, like finally like family friends sort of mine. So they're both kind of helping me out as we kind of go and just kind of filling in as needed. Um, but it's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have a hygienist now. And then I have one assistant. I was supposed to have two, two weeks ago, but that's when the second one didn't show up. So now we're actively looking for the second one again. And then I have an office manager. So on a given day and one receptionist, so receptionist, office manager, hygienist, myself, one assistant. So five people on a given day. Sometimes I'll have a temp come in assistant or I'll have like maybe my mother or my girlfriend in for the day kind of help with bring some people in and out. And that kind of helps a little bit too. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of moving pieces. It's a, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, thankfully having, having some help, having people that are flexible and you know, yeah. being able to kind of fill in, obviously that makes, you know, at least a little bit easier as you kind of deal with, you know, all of the, mm-hmm. the constant interviewing and, now, I, did I hear you right earlier? You said that your uh, office manager is now at least helping with some of the interviewing. Uh, yeah, she's helping me a ton now. So she's she's three days a week uh, with me, and you know, I I me and her both know she's going to be like my long term. Like I, I, we know that, and and I'm you know actually merging. So she has a consulting business. So okay. she's like the top, like even at what she's done, she's doing it for thirty five years. And I'm actually merging with her coaching business, and I'm starting like a limitless thing in the future with her. So like, I know she's like my long-term person. So she's been a tremendous asset to the office. She does most of that stuff that I'm not great at now. And it helps a lot. It's been a lot of better, um, a lot of better interviewees have been coming in just because of her and she, how she's able to manage her phone interview skills and stuff like that, which I'm not great at right now. Yeah. And I mean, obviously having that experience and knowing, you know, the things to ask and, you know, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, for better or worse, you know, I, Similarly, I, I I'd have no idea how to interview medical assistants and, and things along those lines. <laughs> I feel like that's yep. just kind of one of those things. You know, she she's got the skills, she's got the ability, and that's she's gonna end up with a much higher, hopefully much higher strike rate in terms of being able to, you know, actually get people through. Yeah, yeah, and be able to find the people who are gonna last, so, right? And who are gonna wanna wanna be there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm, all mine just never show up. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's absolutely, uh, oh man, I, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know how to say how to talk about it. It's unbelievable. And, yeah. you know, it's one of those things too, like, you know, I'm sure you've kind of talked to other people and, you know, particularly if they've had, you know, practices for the past 10 or 15 years, or, you know, I think even if you listen to, you know, some of the consultants that, you know, built their way of doing things, you know, in a, in a different world, right? Like this world that we're currently living in and dealing with, with you know both the, the the wages that people are getting, but also just the the lack of care about being able to mm-hmm. show up for some people. Obviously, not everybody, but you know for that the fact that people would get hired and not show up, like it's just a very different thing, right? Like it's just not yeah. something that I think most people who haven't practiced in you know this current environment haven't have experienced. Yeah, I mean, there's just there's so much opportunity out for you know assistants, hygienists, anyone these days because they can go on an app like Temp Me or you know the a temp agency app and potentially make ten or fifteen dollars more on an average on a given day, right? Like I had one who I I, I use like Temp Me once in a while or Temp You. I, I, it's one of the names and and they're charging me ten or fifteen dollars more than what I'm paying now. So like I can end up paying a hygienist seventy five to eighty dollars an hour via their app, and it's just like. Ugh, like I, I, that's unsustainable. I can't, I can barely, I'm doing 60 now, which is even like, you know, kind of irks me, but they're great at what they do. So I, I know what I'm getting, what I'm, you know, paying for, but it's just like, ugh, it's tough. It's tough to, tough to throat. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, it's, it's wild, right? Cause I mean, I, you know, that those rates are, that's very similar to California rates, you know, as we've been mm -hmm. kind of working with Ash, you know, and then, you know, I know, you know, she always talks about it. You hear people in other parts of the country and they're like, oh yeah, you know, your hygienist is making, you know, half of uh, what they make here. Yeah. Uh, and they're, so you're making $40 an hour. I'm like, what, what's that? Like, can I come there? <laughs> yeah, just, just crazy wild. Um, uh -huh. so I, I'm, I actually, one of the things that kind of came up in my head as you were kind of talking, so you said that when the hygienist, uh, is going full-time, the other one is not going to be working with you anymore. Yeah. So she, she's like, so the kind of, I had like one, uh, hygienist who I had probably up until December and that was who I started with. Um, it just didn't work out with her. So we went our separate ways. And then, you know, I was kind of in a point where I was getting like a temp for like a week or two. And then I had a family friend who, you know, I knew was a hygienist. I reached out to her and she was like, listen, I know this is not going to be full time because I don't want to do that. But she was like, I'm happy with just working one or two days a week. If, if you need me. And she was like, if you don't even have any patients, just message me a couple of days before and say, I don't have to come. It's no big deal. And so She's been very good about just like kind of filling in on either Wednesday, Friday when I need her. So like she knows the long-term solution. She's not going to be there full time. She's just kind of doing this for extra money on the side because she doesn't really, you know, really need it, I think. So she's Got been it. great and very flexible. Got it. Okay. So I was going to say like the way that you're describing things, it sounds like you actually need the full-time person plus the, uh, the, the other yeah, person it's, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say that quite yet, just because like, you know, you always get nervous looking at the schedule three or four weeks out. Like right now we are booked, but like maybe in two weeks, we won't look like this. So it's just like that constant thing in the back of your head. You're just like, I don't want to push it too hard, too fast. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah, so it's funny, Ash and I have uh, very different viewpoints on these things. And so as she's kind of gone through that in, in, in her practice and trying to figure that out, you know, I've always been much more of the kind of plan for where you anticipate you're going kind of person. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, you know, hire earlier rather than later. Um, yeah. and you know, I, but obviously, you know, especially when you're still early on, I full, I fully get it. And, you know, even to this day, Ash is definitely that kind of person. She's not, she's not the, the higher early kind of person. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. You come across more as the higher early kind of person. I, I, I usually am man, to be honest with you, but like, you know, with, with those couple of marketing things I was talking about before, I just invested a lot of money in some marketing that's going to be coming out in like the next two months. So yeah. like in my mind, I'm just like, all right, like until that marketing actually gets out and like I hopefully it, it works like I expected to with the amount of money I'm putting in. It's just like, OK, look, you know, I'll, I'm getting prepared for the more and more, but it's just like for maybe the next couple of weeks, I trying not to jump too far until that marketing comes out, essentially. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Right on. Well, I guess, I guess since we're uh, bringing that part up, let's let's uh, delve into the marketing aspect of it. What 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 have you been working on? I mean, obviously, I know you said word of mouth is starting to get around. Obviously, you've got a big presence on social media. Um, mm -hmm. you know, what other things have been bringing patients in the door? So we do. So right now we started our office with identity marketing. Uh, those those are the ones that kind of created my logo. They created the initial website. I've been with them from day one. I'm still with them. I think my monthly budget is I think 5,500 maybe or six grand right around. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. And then obviously they have a management fee for that. And I just upped this probably two months ago, initially for the first three months, it was only like 3000 a month. And then I upped it a little bit to five or six during the holiday sort of season. Um, and then in terms of new, what I'm starting. So I'm starting with a mailers company. We're starting with uh, 25 or 5,000 mailers a month for three months. That's starting in about two or three weeks. Okay. Uh, it's a company called Gargle. I was introduced to them by um, a colleague of mine who kind of mentors me a little bit, Mark Howard. He kind of gave me them. So I'm going to try that out. And then I also signed up with um, Progressive Mar uh, Dental Implant Marketing. Okay. Um, they're a pretty big national brand for implant marketing, one of the bigger ones now. You know, I went to a, an event for them down in Florida, like their closing institute event. And like, you know, I've been talking to them for years and years and, you know, I, I never had my own practice and what they really focus on is full arch implants, sort of full arch dentistry. Um, obviously that comes with a higher monthly expense, a higher a, a marketing budget because the type of patients that you're looking for are obviously slightly different than the new patients, right? Yep, yep, yep. So um, we're going to be starting with them. They're, they're actually coming March 20th for a three-day photo shoot. Uh, probably take three or four weeks thereafter for them to make the content. And then I'm going to start pushing that out, which, you know, 
they have a pretty big, you know, kind of price tag initially for the sign up. And then obviously there's a monthly marketing expense too, that goes towards that. So, you know, my, my marketing monthly expenses are probably going to triple, if not quadruple when I'm with them. So like, you can, you know, based off what I said before, it's going to be a pretty high number. Yeah. So what kind of stuff did you start out with? So, I mean, you know, you, so you, obviously you're getting more specific with uh, the things that you're marketing to. Obviously, you know, the kind of uh, things that you want to do, right? Obviously implants and and, and uh, uh, full arch sounds to be mm -hmm. your direction of, of dentistry, but like, how did yeah. you start with that initial, um, those initial phase where, you know, we were working with a dentist, you did the, the, the 3000 and then kind of bumped it up. Like what, what was that involving? So like the initial marketing was more just for new patient flow, right? Like that was pretty much all we did in the beginning. Now, like, fortunately, because of my social media following, I, had a quite a big following from not only my other offices, because not that I message patients, right. But they follow me on Instagram. So they saw when I opened and then they all started transferring. Then I got this big influx of patients that like were kind of just following me because I worked in the area for seven years. Right. And then I also had these other patients who were just reaching out to me on Instagram. So I started making a log. Um, and then literally like three weeks before we opened, we had an Excel sheet of 300 names, right? So we just started calling them. So the first couple of weeks, we had all of these people that kind of for the first two months, it was filled with my patients that I brought in. And then the marketing started to kick in. And now we're seeing like, I would say on average 65 to 70 patients, new patients a month. But again, we're only two and a half days a week. So it's like, not like That's we're patients in two and a half days. A lot of patients in a, in a little amount of time to fit them in. So that's why we're opening up the fourth day. And I'm already starting to consider once this uh, implant marketing game kind of kicks up, getting an associate for a day or two to kind of start doing, you know, kind of the lower, lower kind of productive procedures, just kind of free up my time for consults and stuff like that. So was with the initial um, marketing that you're doing with um, kind of more fo local focused, was that still like, you know, social media based, like, you know, Facebook and things like that. Facebook, Google ads. Um, we did, uh, we didn't do any mailers. And then, so it was mostly Facebook and Google ads, obviously Google ads a little bit more than Facebook. Okay. Um, I, via my Instagram, there was no paid ad. It was just me posting me just talk. I had a Facebook page, me posting on Facebook. What I also did was like the location that I am in Jersey city, I am probably like the only retail or what, uh, like kind of medical dental anywhere within a pretty big area that there's a lot of high rise, um, high end apartment or condominiums. Right. Mm -hmm. And these are all brand new in the past three years, even in like, and that's when I just started. Right. So I'm getting this huge influx of all these patients from these buildings. And like, in my mind, I don't even know if like, I really got my money's worth from this, in, this marketing just because I just have the convenience aspect for so many new buildings. And it's all that high income sort of, 25 to 35 year old kind of patient base. That's like very easy. That's just an easy thing. They walk downstairs, they get their whitening and cleaning. They go back upstairs, get their Invisalign. Obviously it's like, it's, it's just been very easy because of that too. Do you easy, but the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, do you think that the, because your social media was already so um, you know, engaged, impactful uh, that that's the reason why Google has been so much better for you from the marketing standpoint? Um, maybe they, 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 right they couldn't really add much to that side of it yeah i mean think about it like you know i have been on podcasts i have been on websites i have been on doing lecture stuff my social media right when you go on google and you type in my name i have all these things that probably already propped up prior to the limitless dental brand coming up so maybe that just helped drive some seo in the beginning that i didn't even realize and just made stuff a little bit easier and again i've worked in the area for seven or eight years so like that kind of was just you know, my name has been out around the area for patients and then, be, hey, go to Dr. Nick. Oh, where is he? Oh, now he has his own place. So that that was made a little bit easier with that too. And then how did you decide to want to do two new uh, marketing campaigns kind of almost simultaneously, right? Or, or very, very close to each other. So like, you know, I, I never want to just become a drill and fill office, right? And like, that is my fear at heart, right? So like, even though I've been getting a ton of cosmetic patients already, a ton of Invisalign, a ton of implants, I just, with how busy I'm getting now, it's just like, I look at my day sometimes and I see three cleanings and then I see three filling appointments and I'm just like, oh, there's not enough of what I want to be doing on a, on a daily basis. Even though that, then I'll have one day where I do 30,000, I'm like, that's the day I want. But then the next day, it's just fillings and cleanings. And I'm just like, I got to... I don't want this to become a routine just because it's backbreaking. You know, you know how the filling game is and doing that sort of stuff. It's not, 
to me, it's not that as rewarding as doing the implants and doing as the cosmetic cases. Like that's much more rewarding to me because I feel like I'm giving a tangible benefit to most people, right? Changing a life instead of just a class two filling or something is not getting this the same sort of thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I, mean, I totally get it. I mean, obviously, like I said, having walked this journey, but you know, there's 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 a lot of dentists around, right? There's a lot of people that can do those kinds of things. You know, there's yep. there's there's, all, there's not as many that can do the the things that actually change people's lives. Yep, exactly. So, and then like with, with what you said, based off why did I decide both of them, right? So my mentor that I, I talk to at biweekly gives me action items, right? He's been through it. He's opened some offices. So I constantly run ideas and he gives me ideas of what potentially can we be looking for, right? So we just thought we were in a good position now. I had enough money saved in the bank. Uh, you know, my bills are getting paid pretty easily at this point and, and everything that we we're like, hey, we got some extra money now. Let's throw it out because now we can start getting the culture and the systems for these type of procedures set up right now. So th that was the goal. Got it. Do you feel like the um, the mailers uh, that you're working with are going to be targeting things differently? Um, like, how, like I guess how are how are they setting up the mailers? You know, as opposed to you know the pure kind of implant and kind of all on X uh, type of marketing that uh, that you're doing on the other side? So they obviously like, you know, so where I am with all the high rise buildings, that's a lot of people to potentially hit, right? And where I'm located to like, you know, I'm in Jersey City and just like California, like we have a ton of impl a ton of dentists just down the block, right? So I'm hoping this just like, gets a little bit further because right now where I am, I feel like I, I got that niche over there, but I don't have like, let's say a mile further out. And I like, I just want to maybe extend it just a little bit more. Maybe this, you know, because where we are, yes, there's a heavy 25 to 35 year old demo, but Jersey city is a very old city. There's also the people who live on the other side of the city who are that 50, 60 plus demo who actually need the all on X's, right? The people in my building don't need the all on X's. They, they need the veneers and Visline and whitening. That is all they're getting, that all they want, all they need, yeah. given their age and de demographic. So I'm hoping the mailers can get a little bit more of the stretch towards a little bit of, of the older population. Yeah. I, I, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think that was, uh, you know, when we were looking at the uh, doing mailers, that was kind of the transition that Ash was making was towards like, well, really, I want to be targeting you know more of that this fifty five to to sixty year yep. old demo and trying to figure out how to how to be able to kind of specifically get them right the people that still check their mail the people that look yep. forward to that on a daily basis uh -huh. and obviously and the people have the money in their bank accounts too, right exactly. to be able to afford the procedures unfortunately yeah no, <laughs> for sure for sure um, so how do you feel like you've grown as a business person over these past six months, right? Obviously there's a million different things going on. Uh, you know, you've kind of alluded to just the, the number of different uh, balls that you're juggling, um, you know, having come from, you know, the associate, like obviously, you know, being a dentist, you've done that for a long time, uh, you know, having mm -hmm. that, but now like adding in the, the business owner part, right? Like how, what are the things that you would kind of look back now and say, you know, Nick, you know, of, of July of 2023, yeah. like, these are the things that you need to focus on to be able to make sure that your next July is going to be as good as possible. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like I, I, I definitely matured in, in terms of letting things go a little bit easier. Like the, you know, the, in terms of like the, you know, it was a two and a half years from the day I signed my lease to the day that we opened was two and a half years. Right. So it was a very long, stressful kind of process and, you know, I didn't obviously know anything kind of going into it. And, you know, in the first, especially three or four months, I'm kind of just rolling with the punches as we go, like, oh, Bill's late. Oh, okay, let me pay that. Like, the, you're just kind of catching up each day. Um, so, like, I think I've gotten a little bit more systemized in my time. I've been able to kind of figure out, you know, Tuesday, Thursdays are my non-clinical days. I go in for even eight hours, even if I'm not seeing patients, I get my shit done on those two days and those eight hours just so I can make the patient clinical days all about the patients. So like, it's just allotting the time that I need to be able to do. And like, I know Ashley's very kind of good at that and like making sure that she has the hours on point. That's what I've kind of focused on. And it's made me a little bit better of a leader just because I'm not as stressed during the clinical hours, just because I'm giving myself time on the non-clinical days to do all that stuff. Whereas like, I know a lot of dentists, they might open up four or five days off the bat, but that doesn't give them any time to really work on the business. So yeah. providing the time ha has helped, has helped me kind of get into a little bit more of a comfort zone. Yeah, no, I think that's super smart, right? Just giving, making sure that you know, 
I mean, a, you know, a, you know, you're good enough at dentistry to be able to, you know, be productive mm -hmm. in that time. Um, but B being able to give yourself that time to, you know, get all the other stuff that's necessary done, uh, so that you can focus during those eight hours. Cause you know, I mean, we hear it all the time of, you know, people that are coming in and yeah, you're trying to open, you know, four days, five days. I mean, some people, you know, just to be able to try to get things going, right. They'll open six days right off the bat, just to yep. take wh whoever's coming in the door. Uh, and that means your attention's obviously split. You know, you're, you're trying to mm -hmm. pay bills, you're trying to order, you're trying to, you know, do this, that, and the other while, you know, waiting for patients to come in or while patients are in the office. And so I think, yep. that, I think that makes a, 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 it's a really, really smart, um, mature decision that you made. Yeah. And like, not, not only that, like I, I'm fortunate enough to have a great family and like, I've been able to give a lot of, a lot of things that I'm not good at away. Like, so for instance, my mother owns a real estate agency, right? So she's very good with managing, uh, like managing the, the company that uh, runs my building, the management company, the building management company, right? So like, she's dealing with all that stuff now when there's issues with the building, she kind of just handles it, right? My girlfriend's an interior designer. So like when we're changing up rooms or doing anything like that, she kind of deals with all like the contracting stuff. She's helped me with that. So my office manager, again, now she's dealing with the other things. So it's just like, being having the family and the help to be able to push those other things that I'm not good at, or like I can't focus on as well. That has been like the biggest thing is just giving up because I've always wanted to do everything myself. Yeah. But like right, lately, it's like, it's just a relief being able to give this stuff up. And like, I think more people need to be willing to give up the reins a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you're, you're hundred percent right. I mean, that's, I, I think it's one of the hardest things for any doctor to be able to do, right. Is, you know, you, you train yeah. so much to, to focus on everything and to be, try to, try to control as many things as possible, you know, but you know, in business, the more that you do that, the harder things actually get. And so, you know, trying to create yeah. that team. And obviously, you know, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to formulate a team. You uh, were the smartest one by you had a family that was able to build the team for you. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So that's, I think that's that's pretty awesome. I I've had uh, my mother in a few days when uh, my I had an issue with my receptionist. No, showed us quit on us and had my mother in for two weeks taking phone calls at the front desk. Never worked a day before in dentistry, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me a little bit about uh, limitless coaching. So I know you, you kind of alluded to that earlier. Um, yeah, your, your office manager, I think you said it has, uh, been doing a lot of that and you guys are now kind of working on this next, uh, this next, uh, phase. What, what, what's that? Yeah. Going to be about? Yes. So, you know, my office manager has a consulting business right now and, you know, the, we're going to be merging with her consulting business. She has some existing clients. Um, not only that I am part, we have a couple of, or two other partners, uh, one of the other partners is a fellow Coist graduate who lives in Seattle. Um, he's tremendous at doing full arch implants. Like that's his kind of, you know, kind of game and butter. And obviously he's, he's very, very good clinically, um, very high producing. He's even, he's still an associate 36 years old, but he's doing tremendously. Right. Um, so he's going to be the other partner. And then the other partner is actually my brother, who's a videographer. Um, he's going to be doing websites, any sort of the media, um, very help, uh, helping with that. Uh, not only that, we're also going to be employing, you know, certain people to help with certain things. Like one of my hygienists who we've had for years is trained more than any hygienist I ever met. So she's going to be another kind of benefit to the team, hopefully training uh, training other hygienists at offices. And what this is going to be geared for is more swords, new dentists and dental students and kind of anyone trying to get their toes into the owning of a business, right? But not only that, you know, because we have the consultant on our on our team who has a 35 you know, years of experience at the front desk, if there is a more experienced dentist who has owned for a while, we do have someone that's going to be able to help them with the front desk, right? So that's going to what she's going to kind of be focused on. We're going to be more focusing on helping anyone clinically as much as we can, which can potentially be in-office kind of training or it can be, you know, weekly zooms um anything that we can kind of think of in terms of helping my brother is going to be helping teams with potentially doing headshots and video shots for offices he's going to potentially be able to fly in for weekends and be able to do that um not only that i'm going to hopefully to train people how to do social media a little bit better how to kind of redefine their brand and kind of help with terms of that so it is a very big encompassing kind of coaching but it's also going to be very unique towards what the person needs right because Dentists come in many shapes and forms. There's a new dentist who just graduated who's not even going to be think about opening up an office, but is going to want to in five or six years. And, you know, I've been through it over the past seven years. And, you know, I've worked with 
a bunch of consulting agencies and a bunch of different marketing companies to be able to kind of give my advice at this point. So that's what we're kind of gearing up for. You know, the we're in the process of getting all the trademarking and stuff done actually right now. We're hopefully by the end of this year, early next year, be able to launch an online kind of program, uh, online kind of portal to start, you know, introducing everything about it. But it's going to be a combo of kind of virtual training with potential for in-office training. We'll fly into you or you come into us. You see what we're doing implant wise or cosmetic wise. We'll have you come in for a weekend. We'll show you what we do, the kind of the systems and stuff like that. So there's a lot of sort of things that are going to be there, but again, geared towards more younger, newer dentists. Got it. Oh, it's very cool. I think, I think it's, it's, it's a, it's a really interesting take on a, kind of a, a, you know, a built-in mentor of a lot of hats, right? Yes. That that's what it, it's more sort of, and that's why we're not naming it a consulting, right? Cause I think consulting is a lot more specific towards what they're consulting. Let's say a, a startup consulting agency, right? And I use one for my office. We're not saying we're going to be that, right? But we're more of a, a mentor coach, want to help you either clinically or, you know, business-wise grow in any sort of way. Any way that we can help with the amount of experience that we're going to have on our team, I think is going to be beneficial, hopefully to as many people as we can, you know, especially with my social media. You know, I get asked questions every day, you know, and I, I don't have the time to answer all these questions anymore. So to be able to give give back a little bit more by getting paid to give my time to free up space so I can actually help more people. That That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine how many uh, messages you get. I mean, I, I know how many Ash gets and your following is gigantic compared to compared to hers on. Yeah, uh, things like man, it's, so. it gets tough. Like after I post like a, like a video I posted last week that ever, I don't know if you've, you've seen any of them, but actually you probably saw the one I posted last week that went like relatively viral in the dental world, like 20,000 likes, 20,000 shares. I'm getting, you know, thousands of messages just based off this one thing. And like, I'm the type who wants to answer them all, but like I physically can if I'm in the office all day and then it just becomes like a second job. Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine that's probably a, a fairly stressful thing, right? Cause I mean, obviously you, you seem like a guy that's giving, like wants to be able to, sh to share and be able to educate. Um, but you know, that, that the amount of time that's necessary to, to be able to reach back out to, to people is, is tough. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not that we don't want to, right. It's just the time dentists are very busy. Cause like we can't physically text when we're in, in with the patient. So it can be eight hours where we're not looking at our phones. We're not able to do anything because we're just moving so fast all day. It's a odd profession in, in that sense. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that, that's cool. I, I, I think, I mean, it seems like something that was, would be very, very helpful for a lot of uh, kind of, like you said, early career, you know, obviously even, even more so than that, but you know, particularly for that early career where, you know, they are the people that, you know, have, have watched a lot of your videos, probably watched them through dental school, you know, really got a lot of inspiration from them, learned a lot, but really need that extra step, right? Because, you know, everybody needs yeah. mentors and, you know, some people like you and Ash go to Coice and be able to make connections that way. And for some people, you know, taking that much vacation time and that much dedication to, you know, however many tens of thousand dollars you guys spend for that course isn't, isn't, isn't right now, right? Yeah. And, th and that's the, the cool thing about it is that we're not looking to make a, a ton of money. Like we're literally going to be a more affordable sort of subscription sort of stuff that you're going to get with it. And that's what my hope is to make this available to as many people as possible and not be one of those consulting companies that charges $80,000 for, you know, a couple months of work, right? Like that's not what we're looking to do. <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea what you're talking about. We've never experienced anything like that. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, we got, you got marketing new stuff coming on, you know, always looking for new people. Um, what else? I mean, I, I you know, I, I would imagine it's probably, we're hopefully going to follow up in you know another couple of Absolutely. months as, as things are going, yeah. but what are the, what are the other things on the horizon, um, coming up, uh, um, the build outs, obviously, man, you got a lot of stuff. Yeah. The build, yeah. The build out, the build out is a big, like over the next, so the, over the next month, we're, we're trying to rush to get this build out like more finished because March 20th is when the implant company is coming to film for the whole weekend. So I'm getting all the final art touches. Like in the beginning, I didn't have the money, but now we're kind of bougieing up to make it a little bit better for some photo shoots and stuff like that. Um, I'm actually do going to lecture in Guyana, South America oh, nice. in uh, June. Yeah. And then I'm taking, a, I'm actually auditing a CE course out in San Francisco in like May, uh, the Burke implant Academy. Okay. Um, so I got a couple things coming up um, lecture wise. Um, and then I'm also going to Vegas too for implant. Um, the implant progressive market is hosting a uh, weekend there for their closing Institute again. So going to be flying out there and, you know, hopefully obviously learning, learning more stuff that I'll be able to bring with me in the future. 
Nice. So yeah, busy couple months coming up. Yeah, that is, it sounds like it. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm extremely impressed. I think you, you've obviously done an amazing job. It's fun to, it's fun to hear. Like I said, I've definitely listened to uh, all the, the stories <laughs> that you and Ash have been uh, documented. I hope people got some value out of me filling in for Ash. Hopefully it wasn't uh, as bad as I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, you're. We're. I think we were good. We were good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Ashley it went great. Man. Make her like, feel better. Best of luck. I, I, you know, <laughs> thank you. Sound like they're going great. Um, when thank you're out you. here in San Francisco, uh, reach out to Ash. You know, we're, Absolutely. Uh, to kind of catch up and meet in person. Um, Absolutely, I know, man. I know she would also uh, not be happy if I didn't uh, invite you to Vail in September. Uh, that's where. The, oh yeah. The virtue is going to be in I, September. I I got to do this one because last year I had like a last minute with everything going on. The office just opened, yeah. but. I'll be a year from then. I could tell Ashley, I, I want to come to this one. Like this one, count me in for this one. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, Ash, Ash wanted to figure out how we can make things even more bougie than we've done. So we're staying at the four seasons in Vail. you know, I mean, I think Ooh. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice little getaway for, for everybody to come to. Awesome, man. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so, uh, everybody, uh, Dr. Nick's stuff will, be, uh, places you can find him will be, uh, in the show notes, but he's Dr. Nick C, correct? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Nick C on, in, on Instagram. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, thank you for bringing us along on thank your journey you and uh, we'll we'll continue sharing it as best we can. Absolutely. Thanks again, everyone. And thank you. I appreciate you taking the time and filling in for Ashley too. Thank you. Awesome.